Hey, it's Nick Capozzi, and welcome to Razzball Radio on the Fantasy Sports Network. We continue our hot streak of amazing guests because today we've got all the way from ProjectRoto.com. You know him as, Proj- as at Project Roto on Twitter. He is Nick Raducanu. Nick, welcome to Razzball Radio on the Fantasy Sports Network. How are you today, good sir? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? Man, I am fantastic. I wish I was in Boston with you, though. I saw you sipping on a cup of Dunkin' Donuts before. I could go for a <laughs> cup of Dunkin' right now. Me. <laughs> there you go. It's all good, man. So listen, Project man. Roto runs on Duncan, my, my man. Hey, I love to hear that. You want to follow Nick because Nick is one of the most interactive uh, tweeters, I guess is the, the correct term, that uh, that I've ever seen. Great guy, full of knowledge. But here's what I want to talk to you about today because this is super cool, and we're starting to roll into football season. Quick note for the baseballers, guys, we're working on some stuff for you so that you still get uh, your seam head knowledge. But right now we're going to talk a little bit of football with Nick. So, Nick, you have one of the coolest things I have ever seen. And this is what I want to talk to you about today. If you go to projectroto.com, you have a service where basically you're there to be someone's personal assistant for fantasy in general, but right now, fantasy football. And I'm going to tell you something. I need that. Where do I sign up? (laughs) I don't think you need it, but maybe some folks do. You know how many leagues Um, I got to run, Nick? (laughs) <laughs> I, I wish I could hire somebody to run all my leagues for me, too. I, I hear you. Absolutely. I need an intern. Um, if you want to be my league-running intern, call me. DM me. <laughs> all right, so I want to talk about this personal assistant thing because I want to make sure I get this right. You will actually get on the phone with someone and do their draft with them. Yeah, you know, and, and we're flexible, too. Like, some people don't like talking on the phone. We can do a, a Google chat or uh or what we're doing right now, like a Google Hangout or Skype session, or uh, or we can just be old school and pick up the phone. So yeah, we want to offer people a, a service where you know they can almost like use a lifeline basically during their draft. And you know, if you get stuck and you're like, do I draft C.J. Spiller or Doug Martin? You know, give us a call, or we'll sit there on the phone the whole time during your draft and uh, and help you draft. So you know, I think a lot of people out there, the knowledge base is growing in the fantasy industry, um, both among the experts, obviously, as well as the casual uh, fan or player or whatever so you know I think a lot of people are like I don't need that but you know like you said I'm sure you wouldn't mind having somebody to kind of serve as a gut check on the phone with you during your draft and and personally I wouldn't either you know I mean I don't you know like you said I'm chock full of knowledge as as well as other things I guess but um, you know I think a lot of people out there who who know who think they know everything still want a gut check every every once in a while so you know whether you want us to tell you who to draft or whether you want us to kind of serve as a sounding board we're, we're really there to provide the service of really whatever you want and in that premium package you also do a weekly chat with guys we do yeah we offer a couple different things it's like as part white of that glove package. valley I'm service i'm sorry it's like white glove valley service it's like the, the is, four seasons is, yeah. of fantasy sports here <laughs> well i'm still trying to work on the, the pricing tiers right now because you know our, our premium service is you know about i think a uh, hundred dollars right now for the season so that might be a little much for some folks. We do want to offer some tiered pricing where, you know, you might be able to get in at $10 and get kind of a stripped down model or maybe 25 or 50. And I'm still trying to figure that out. So um, if you, if, if those of you out there have some ideas on that, like Nick said, at Project Roto, get me, get at me there. Um, but yeah, we do offer a weekly chat. Um, we offer some, some email access. So, you know, if you don't want us during your draft, you could get us in the middle of the week and, you know, shoot out those who do I start questions. Awesome. Um, you could also... Uh, listen to our weekly podcast. We're going to be doing a, a new guest fantasy analyst every week, sort of like what you do, um, just for members. And if you want to hear some folks, maybe from Rasball, like hey. Sky or like Nick, um, or, or some other industry analysts out there, uh, that'll be part of the package as well. So, so yeah, white glove service. We're trying to give folks pretty much anything that they would need for the for the fantasy season. Uh, we'll be dabbling in a little bit of daily too. So if folks want to get in on it, any of those daily sites, we'll be doing tutorials. Uh, optimized lineups, different players to target. So a little bit of everything for, for everybody. Okay. Now, Nick really is a, he's a bright guy. I go to him when I want to bounce ideas off sometimes. So he's definitely a great follow at Project Roto. I want to talk a little uh, fantasy football with you because, of course, we're transitioning into that. Um, let's do some quick hits on quarterbacks here. I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to throw some names out. And I kind of want to see where you have these guys ranking. Maybe we can kind of get a peek behind the curtain of your premium service here. Yeah, sure. yeah. So we're I'm a guy that I'm not sure where I have him this year yet because I think he could explode. But what's your take on Matthew Stafford right now? Where do you have him in terms of your QB rankings? 
I mean, I, I like Stafford just as much as the next guy and, and maybe more a little bit. Um, I have Stafford in my top five. I have him at four right now. Um, that said, you know, I could I could argue Andrew Luck over him. I could maybe even put an argument together for Nick Foles over him. But in that Detroit offense, adding Golden Tate, he has Megatron back, obviously. Um, they added Ebron, and they have Pettigrew, who I think is more of a uh, deterrent, I guess, from drafting Ebron. Um, they do have that full full set of options. They've got Joyke Bell. They've got Reggie Bush. He's got every weapon a quarterback could possibly want. And, you know, they don't have the best defense in the world. So a lot of the time they're playing you're from kidding. behind. <laughs> and Tiger, their uh, Lions fans don't like that defense. But, yeah, I mean, you're looking at a guy who didn't finish top five last year among quarterbacks, but he was pretty darn close. I mean, he was only nine points in most leagues, depending on your scoring, behind Rivers. Andy Dalton actually finished ahead of him last year, which is surprising. I don't well, you think you got to throw out those couple game. of big games that Dalton had, right? I mean, that's... Yeah, exactly. So, you know, Stafford's one of those guys where if you owned him during your fantasy playoffs last year, he's probably on your dead-to-me list because he put up a whopping 19 points during the fantasy playoffs. But in the rest of the games, really up until week 14, he was consistently putting up 18, 19, 20. He had he's, his high week, he had two weeks of 26 in there, so... I mean, we're looking at a guy with six weeks over 20 points, and that's that's going to win you a lot of weeks. So, yeah, you know, I don't love Stafford as much as Manning and Breeze and Rodgers, but I think once you get past that tier, he's probably your highest upside guy, maybe outside of Andrew Luck. All right. If you want to pick Nick's brand, you can actually come out. He'll be at the Boston Tour Stop when we roll through to the greatest right. bar right across the street from the Gardens uh, in <laughs> Boston. We're there August 22nd, 7 p.m. Come hang out with uh, Nick, myself. Uh, we also got Jesse, the uh, – fantasy baseball blogger, and, of course, the Rasball crew. It's going to be a good time. Um, quick hits here. Stafford or Foles? I go Stafford. I, you know, I like Foles. I, I love that he's in the Chip Kelly offense. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit kind of worried about how he'll do with Macklin, who's not the most durable guy in the world, and Riley Cooper, who had one really good game and then was kind of just so-so the rest of the season. So, I worry a little bit about Foles being as productive as he was last year. You know, part of me is like, is, it, is he lightning in a bottle? He might be great, but at the same time, I don't think he's the guy that Chip Kelly would choose if he had his choice of a quarterback. I think he's kind of fallen into Foles just because of lack of better options. Um, I don't think that's going to change this year. Okay, Nick, but at real the same quick, time, only because we got to go to break. Just a yes or no, is there a chance the Lions could be the number one fantasy offense this year? I think so, absolutely. No no doubt. With all the weapons they have, absolutely. Okay, that wasn't what word. That's okay. We're going to work with Nick here on this. I'm <laughs> just kidding, buddy. Hey, this is Raswell Radio on the Fantasy Sports Network. We'll be right back with Nick right after this. Welcome back to Raswell Radio on the Fantasy Sports Network. Hanging out with my man Nick from ProjectRoto.com at Project Roto. Nick, we were talking quarterbacks earlier. Let's transition into running backs right now. You know, I was in Toronto before moving to Phoenix this year, so I've been watching the Bills closely for a long time. I'm heavily invested in keeper and dynasty leagues with C.J. Spiller. I have them all over the place. Here's my question. They're saying that C.J. Spiller could be the bell cow. Yeah, I've heard that before, so I'm not buying it. Then they're saying Bryce Brown looks really good in camp. Uh, there was actually a quote that he has rockets in his shoes. So my question to you is, what happens to Fred Jackson? I mean, I think there's a non-zero chance that Fred Jackson gets cut during the preseason. Come on. Uh, I don't think they will, the but the pride I of mean, Co State <laughs> or Co College. I mean, would it shock you completely? I, I'd be surprised, but at the same time, I, I wouldn't bet my mortgage that he's on the team when the season starts. So, and I don't Boston know. Yeah, mortgages yeah. aren't cheap, people. Ah, <laughs> uh, did we lose yeah. Nick? Oh, there he is. Okay, thank goodness. No, I'm still here. I, I was just saying they don't get you much those Boston mortgages, but uh, but it, but yeah, at the same time, I, I think um, those those training camp quotes get a little bit worrisome. You know, last year it was we're going to run Spiller until he pukes, and that didn't really work out too well. Um, I actually read a quote this morning where Spiller himself said we're going to ride with the hot hand this year, and I know fantasy owners aren't going to like that. So, you know, I don't I try not to put too much stock into those preseason quotes, especially when they're from coaches best laid plans and all you know those go up in smoke once you start one and four um but yeah spiller has the upside but it looked but like you said bryce brown they traded for him so they're not going to just put him on the bench um fred jackson was better than spiller last year so yeah i mean he, he worries me a little bit um especially if you're drafting him as your rb1 which i've seen a lot of people do so far okay let's stick with the bills but let's change positions i am on the record as being an ej Manuel fan i think long term the guy has real upside I think a lot of people are down on him. But my question is about Sammy Watkins because 
it used to be wide receivers would take three years to be really effective. But because college offenses now are so similar to pro offenses, these guys can transition a lot more. They spent a boatload to get Sammy Watkins in the draft. Obviously, the regime in Buffalo right now knows they got to put a product on the field that can win. So I think Watkins can get a ton of burn. I can see, you know, deep balls. I can see a lot of uh, screens, stuff like that. What kind of numbers do you think could be realistic for Sammy Watkins this year? Yeah, I mean, you know, like I think you hit it on the head with the first thing you said. I think Watkins is kind of tied to to Manuel, and, and this, as well as Manuel does this year, will he'll take Watkins with him. Watkins is a, is an elite talent. You know, he was number one on the Bills draft board. I read the other day, um, above everybody. So. You know, I think they're going to make a big, big effort to make him a focal point of their offense. I think he's got the talent to become, you know, one of the top 10 receivers in the league, if not top five eventually, maybe not this year. Um, but, yeah, you know, I think Manuel needs to increase his accuracy. You know, it's not like Watkins is a big six four six five target like Megatron or Vincent Jackson or somebody like that. So, you know, I think if they can work in some screens, kind of get Manuel working on his accuracy – you know, I don't think it's out of the question to see something like 75, 80 receptions out of Watkins and, um, you know, breaking a thousand yards for him with, with the lack of competition, I guess he has at wide receiver. They have some decent guys like Williams and, and uh, Goodwin and guys like that. But at the same time, I think he's the guy that's going to be the focal point of that offense. I think he sees, you know, at least 150 targets. And uh, as, as long as he can find the end zone, which is a big if with Manuel throwing the ball, yeah, I don't. I don't see any reason we don't see 75, 80 catches, thousand yards, and maybe six or seven touchdowns out of them. Nick, I love you, but I'm telling you, Manuel's going to be relevant this year. I really think so. Maybe I'm not. You know, they added some more weapons there too. Robert Woods, because Stevie Johnson's gone now. Don't forget, he went to uh, the 49ers. So Robert yeah. Woods is a guy who's also a late round sleeper worth considering. The only thing that you know worries me about really about the passing game in Buffalo is, of course, the weather. Let's shift gears to the okay. AFC South. Let's talk a little bit of Colts. Um, I love Andrew Luck. I think Andrew Luck could, could take a big step forward this year. He is not just, I mean, the guy is a winner, which doesn't necessarily translate to fantasy, but the guy's a winner. Sure. They upgraded the receiving core by getting Knicks. Now, I don't like Knicks' health. Wayne is a year older. I believe Fleener could be relevant, but it hasn't happened yet. So my, here's where I want to go on this. The running back situation. Trent Richardson has been going like the 28th running back off the board, which is nuts to me because I know he hasn't looked good prior. I know with the addition of the camp this year, hopefully he can get into the system. But as long as those wide receivers stay healthy, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for running lanes there. Ahmad Bradshaw is never healthy, so I'm just taking him out of the picture. Is there a chance in your mind that Trent Richardson could really take a step forward this year and finally become maybe at least 75 cents on the dollar of what we thought he could be? Yeah, you know, it's funny you ask that because I, I actually uh, got asked by our friends at Fantasy Pros to, to write a quick blurb last night over uh, if out of any running back, see if I can remember this correctly, out of any running back that's going after RB20, so that counts as Richardson, uh, which one has the best chance to finish as an RB1, and, and RB1 being a, a top 10, top 12 yep. running back. Um, so I actually went with Richardson with hey, that. Hey, I didn't even so know that. Bring that up. Um, you know, he's, he's going as the 25th, I think, something like that, running back. I'll look at it right now. I think 25, 26. Um, he's going below guys like uh, Toby Gerhardt. He's going below guys like Ben Tate. He's going below guys like Joyke Bell, who's a backup right now. So, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunity with Richardson, and he's actually RB28 on the Fantasy Pros ADP right now. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunity there. Like you said, Ahmad Bradshaw just, you know, gets hurt sneezing. And uh, Vic Ballard's coming off a huge knee injury. So, yeah, I mean, I think this is a team that invested a lot in Richardson. Um, he didn't have a full offseason with them last year. Now, it worries me a little bit that rookie running backs can come in and be effective, and T. Rich couldn't do it um, in his second year in the league learning a new offense. But um, at the same time, this is a talented runner. He breaks tackles. He, he gets yards after contact. The low yards per carry worry me a little bit, but – I mean, if you can get this guy in the fifth, or maybe not fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth round, I mean, he's a steal at that point. He's been an RB1 before. So a lot of those guys I threw out there, like Gerhardt, like Bell, like Ben Tate, you can get them later too, but none of these guys have proven it before. And, and none of I them know have the upside that T. Rich has. I mean, Nick, hold on. I want to come back with you. I got more to talk to you about. If you can stick around right here, Raswell Radio on the Fantasy Sports Network. More with the man from Project Roto after this. Got a few more minutes here with Nick 
Red Canu from ProjectRoto.com here, Rasball Radio on the Fantasy Sports Network. Okay, we've talked some running backs. I want to stick on that for a second. Let's go to St. Louis. One guy I'm not buying with his 3.9 yards per carry and his history of injuries is Zach Stacy. I don't get why he is going so high. And I'll tell you, Lamar Miller of Miami played behind a worse offensive line last year and had a higher yards per carry average 22 running backs later. What's the story with Zach Stacy? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I like Stacy. I, I, I'm kind of with you. Like, I don't love the talent. I like his situation a little bit more. And I know they drafted Mason, and, you know, they're talking about a running back competition and all that. But if you look back at his stats last year, here's the thing I like the most. Opportunity. I mean, he had 26 carries in Week 8. He had 27 carries in Week 9. He had 26 in Week 10. So that's three weeks in a row where he's getting more carries than, you know, most running backs, like even more than Adrian Peterson or LaShawn McCoy. And then at the end of the season, in week 15, he had 28 carries, and then he had 33 against Tampa in week 16. So I'm with you. I don't love the talent. He's an injury-prone guy. He's not, you know, he's not LaShawn McCoy. He's not Adrian Peterson. But in an offense where, let's let's face it, they don't have the best passing game in the world. They have Sam Bradford at quarterback. And I don't really think they have a whole lot of great options, and that includes Mason. I think Stacy kind of lucks himself into it. I'm, I'm with you. I'm not taking him in the top 20 like I've seen people going. But if you get into the third round, maybe he even slips into the fourth round for you. I mean, that's a steal. Um, but he's, he's one of those guys. I don't have a problem drafting him as my RB2, maybe RB3, depending on what you did in the first couple rounds. See, if you're getting Stacy, I, I think you absolutely have to handcuff with Trey Mason. Okay, let's stick with the – I think that's the, probably true, sure. Yeah. Let's stick in the show-me state. Let's talk about Jamal Charles, who right now is the consensus number one player this year. And look – He's phenomenal. This is not, I am not talking him down by any stretch of the imagination. My only concern is he's not huge. There's a no. lot of miles on him. People forget that. He's been around for a while. Sure. Is he the number one guy at the end of the year, in your opinion? Even if, whether or not you, know, you have to take I, him number one right now, is he going to be the number one fantasy player at the end of this year? You know, I'm actually taking McCoy over him right now. Yep. And uh, I'll tell you why. I, I think. You know, I'm not in the business of predicting injuries, and I don't want to do that because, you know, that's just not fair. The football's a violent sport. Anybody can get hurt. Sure. Um, but, at, but at the same time, you, you're right. We're talking about a guy who's coming off, you know, not coming off, but he's had a serious knee injury before. Um, he's in an offense where, you know, let's face it, if you compare Nick Foles in the passing game of the Eagles to with Darren Sproles now um, to the passing game of the Chiefs with Alex Smith and Dwayne Bowe, you know, it's no contest. So I think – McCoy, like you hit on before with, with running lanes, I think McCoy is going to have some more running lanes. He's going to have less, you know, stack the box. And he's going to have less guys that, frankly, are just keying in on him. I mean, I could see teams facing the Chiefs and putting a spy on Charles, kind of trying to limit those 70 receptions he had out of the backfield last year. And, you know, a large part of Charles's value last year were his receiving touchdowns. He had seven, yeah. um, which is way more than any other running back had last year. So, you know, if you look at his rushing stats, you know, McCoy had almost 60 rushes more than, than Charles did last year. So there's more opportunity. He had uh, over 300 yards more than Charles did last year. So Charles was very much uh, touchdown dependent. And I don't love banking on touchdowns from year to year because, you know, let's face it, I don't think Charles is going to score 19 touchdowns this year. Hope he does if you draft him with number one. But at the same time, I'm kind of a little more comfortable taking the guy in Chip Kelly's offense than I am taking the guy in Andy Reid's offense. All right, good stuff. Let's stay in the same division. I want to talk to you about Denver, Monty Ball specifically. I think a lot of people think because of how prolific the passing attack was and there was so much room to move for Sean Marino that Monte Ball is just going to slide in there and have a similar, if not more productive season than Marino did because really, look, it was the first time Marino had ever been effective. Are you buying that, that he can just plug and play? So two questions here. A, can Denver be as good in the passing game as they were last year, which I, I think they could be. But B, this ball just slide in there and give you similar to pr production? Because right now he's going, you know, as a mid-first rounder. Yeah, I mean, I think to, to answer the first question, yeah, I think I think they can be just as good as last year. Now they lost Decker, who I think is probably the best out of the guys they, they've replaced him with. Sanders is fine, and, uh, you know, I think they'll have Latimer's fine too. But at the same time, I think Decker, you know, is – borderline one of those top receivers maybe not quite there but I think they lose a little bit with him now they still have Peyton Manning they still have Tom at both Thomas's um, I think the passing game sticks holds up I don't know if they have the most prolific season ever like they did last year 
Um, but I think they should open some lanes for Ball. Now, Ball worries me a little bit, though, just because, you know, he's not the best at pass protecting. And if you're in a Peyton Manning offense, yep. you need to pass protect. So, you know, and, and he also had a little trouble holding onto the ball last year, too. So now the thing that I guess makes me feel a little bit better is, you know, they have C.J. Anderson and Ronnie Hillman behind him. So it's not like he's got somebody like Moreno nipping at his heel, heels this year. Um, at the same time, though, we probably said the same thing about Moreno, you know, in mid-July last season, where it's like, oh, he's not going to do anything in terms of displacing Ball. So, you know, I, I, I like Ball. I don't love him as a first-round pick like I've been seeing him go. I'm not even sure I love him as an early second-round pick like I've been seeing him go. So if you can get to the end of the second round and he's still sitting there, I think you have to pounce on it just because of his opportunity. Um, if he's, for some reason, in the third round, you just got to steal – um, but yeah, I think there's safer options and safe doesn't always win you your league, but I think there's safer options in the first round and even the early second round than Monte Ball. Just keep this in mind, people. You can't necessarily win your draft with your first two picks, but you can lose it with your first two picks. So I would rather have, you know, something safe and secure in that type of situation. He is Nick Raducanu from projectroto.com at Project Roto on Twitter. Again, you want to see his valet service that they have with the uh, personal drafting assistant, especially guys, if you're on Wall Street, why not get a genius like this helping you out? Obviously, you just saw the the great insight and analysis he offered. Nick, really appreciate you joining us today. Razzball Radio here on the Fantasy Sports Network. Love to have you on again in the future. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. We'll be back with more baseball and gray tomorrow. Razzball Radio.